We are headed to San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf, the city's biggest tourist area. And today, we'll be tourists too. With Madame Tussaud's Wax Museum and the San Francisco Aquarium on our agenda. When filming in crowd situations like this, the video gear I take along is always minimal. I go small and light for a few reasons. I'll be doing a lot of walking and I don't want to be weighed down with a lot of heavy equipment. Just the camera and tripod should do. But with that decision comes some compromises. I'm leaving the handle of the X2000 at home and making do with the camera's built-in microphone. I'm anticipating mostly B-roll today and I'm willing to sacrifice the better audio of the shotgun mic for less weight and bulk. When it's just the camera and spare battery, I like using a holster style case designed for an SLR with telephoto lens. It fits the camera perfectly and I can get the camera out and recording in a matter of seconds. Action is fleeting and presents itself spontaneously. If you're fumbling to get the camera out of its bag, you're going to miss the shot. So what's the formula for capturing compelling footage? There's an old photographer saying that goes, F8 and be there. F8 refers to the technical part of having your camera and settings dialed in. And be there means having done all the planning and preparation to be in place and ready for that decisive moment. Now luck sure can play a part in getting a great shot, but it's no accident the photographer was there in place and time to capture it. I'm pretty old school when it comes to tripods and I use one whenever practical. Active camera is one thing, but shaky footage is unacceptable. And I'm always willing to carry along some form of camera support. And it does take time to set up, but if you have that time without risking the shot, I find that even my compositions are better because of the planning. Sometimes, I'll even walk around with the whole rig, especially when shooting birds. I can be both fast and stable that way. And when I get back and edit that stable footage, not once have I regretted the time it took to set up sticks. And I've kicked myself for the times that I didn't. My full-size carbon fiber tripod has a really smooth fluid head, but it's still the heaviest one I own. I could go with the featherweight Benro Travel Angel, good for lockdown situations, but severely lacking to follow action smoothly. I could change out to a better head, but then again, that's more weight. Instead, I think I'll go with one of the monopods with feet. Less stable and risky to leave unattended, but easier to quickly deploy and a smaller footprint in a museum situation. And speaking of museums and a lot of other venues, you want to fly as low key as possible. If the management sees you with a fancy rig, they could flag you as a commercial photographer operating without a permit and shut you down. You're also more appealing to thieves. San Francisco can be a logistical challenge for anything that you want to do there. We've planned ahead and bought tickets online to both venues and even prepaid parking to reduce that challenge. But what I really want to challenge is the Panasonic HC-X2000's low light capabilities. Both shoots are indoor available light and I want to see how the camera's fast lens and Venus processing engine work with the tiny sensor. The camera is packed full of professional features but I think for many people contemplating buying one of these, the gorilla in the room is that small 1 over 2.5 sensor. For perspective, here's a size comparison of 1 over 2.5 and a full frame 35 millimeter sensor. The difference is vast, and it's impossible to defy the light gathering laws of physics. But then again, I'm always amazed how technology continues to make end runs around past givens. The camera's strong suit is its grab and go ability. Leave it on auto, let the camera handle all the technical aspects, while you concentrate on just the art. 
In auto mode and in good light, the camera does perform well. But to my taste, it tends to overexpose a bit. So to preserve the highlights, I set the auto exposure compensation to minus three quarters of a stop. For these indoor shots, I'm going to leave the camera on full auto and let it decide how far to push the gain, shutter, and iris. So come along, we're headed to Fisherman's Wharf.
Yeah, two drumsticks.